It's the Let's Talk Polyamory podcast, where we talk about all things consensual non-monogamy, polyamory, open relationships, swinging, and how you can have secure and sexy relationships, no matter how you do them. Now here's your host, Tara and Andre. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So what are you doing with the guitar? Uh, I thought you were going to play something. No, no, not yet. No, I'm practicing, practicing. Another like 30, 40 years before I play live. <laughs> I'm shy. Do you know that? I, it's funny because I'm like, you know, I'll walk around on a nude beach. I'll talk to people on the subway, all kinds of things. But then at other times, I'm like super shy and like it surprises mm-hmm. myself. Sometimes I'm shy. Sometimes you're shy. Sometimes okay. I'm, shy. I'm a shy guy right now. All right. Well, let's jump in. So That's welcome. Right. We are broadcasting from Montreal, Quebec, mm-hmm. Canada. Yeah, yeah. So we'd love to know from you where you're from, yeah, where, where you're joining from us. Yeah, yeah. But if you're yeah. new to the group, we come here with a topic around polyamory, relationships, communication, attachment, agreement, sex, and uh, more. Sexual identity, sexual procedures, sexual <laughs> acts, yes. open relating. All oh, those things. All yes, those things. all yeah. those subjects. Oh, I'm Tara Lynn Franco, and I'm a relationship and awesomeness coach. I'm Andrea Turcot. I'm a sex positive psychotherapist. And so today's topic is yeah. that we are going to talk about personal boundaries. Mm-hmm. Personal boundaries mm-hmm. are such an interesting topic. They sure are, right? Yeah, and the reason um, I thought we might do this today is because obviously it comes up as something we talk to our clients about, but it just seems to have recently have been coming up a lot lately, yeah. so I feel like it was the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Personally, it's been coming up a lot or professionally? Well, I did have an instance come up, but I did have a training mm-hmm. in another program that I'm in about boundaries. And then a couple of my clients that I'm working with, mm-hmm. some things came up where we ended up talking about boundaries. So it was like, oh, Quran, it seemed like. Well, we would like to know from you, do you find it easy mm-hmm. to say no to others or tell people if they cross a boundary? Easy or do you find it difficult? Is yeah. it hard for you to announce that? Yeah, so Mm -hmm. let us know in the comments. We would love to hear from you. One of our friends wrote in and said, uh, sometimes it's a bit of both, which is absolutely right. But we were talking about that. You might find it easy enough to say certain things to certain people, but then have it more difficult with other people. Depends on who it might be, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and when it's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends on where they are within what type of relationship you have with them, but also your comfort level. Because I think some people, I don't know, for some people, sometimes it's harder to announce our boundaries to others, but maybe mm-hmm. those are the people that we need to announce them to the most. Oh, that's an interesting question. By the end of today, we're gonna to share with you uh, what personal boundaries are mm-hmm. and why they're important. We're gonna talk about how you can set boundaries and communicate them and what happens when you don't uh, stick to them. So, mm-hmm. uh, you can read in the comments. You can read it if you want. I do not find it easy. Total guilty of people pleasing, learning how important it is to identify and communicate boundaries. Though. I think there's a few people that said that about being a people pleaser. When you're a people pleaser, the only people you don't please, I think, is yourself. Is yourself. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's such an interesting thing because I think it happens very often that uh, whether we're people pleasers or not, I don't know how you actually define that. But the idea is that I want to express my desires, my needs, my boundaries, my preferences, and yet I'm hesitant to do so because of X, Y, and Z. And those mm-hmm. X, Y, and Zs might have to do with, well, I imagine that the other person is going to feel put out or they're not going to understand or they're not going to like me as much or whatever the scenario yeah. is. And I will discount my own needs for the other person. I said, well, you know, that's okay. Look at me on the flip side or it's not that important. We'll minimize our own desires or whatever. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And we're going to definitely talk a lot about that mm-hmm. a little bit later on. I've definitely had some experiences like that on my own. And stay to the end of today's uh, live training because we're going to share with you a cheat sheet. Well, we're going to tell you how to get mm-hmm. to it and then I'll send it to you. So, yeah. So, so let's. So that's what you've been working on all this time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Actually, we've yeah. been spending, we spent a lot of time on this today. Yeah. Even though I feel like we've been talking a lot about boundaries, we want to make sure mm-hmm. we gave you the most out of today. So yeah. let's start with what are personal boundaries. Sure. Sounds like a good place to start. Yeah, so I think it's an interesting topic as well. So some of you, um, let us know if you uh, find this as well. People use the terms boundaries, rules, and agreements mm-hmm. interchangeably, I, I find, particularly in polyamory mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or open relationship groups. Is that something that you've been noticing lately? Or? Yeah, yeah, I think that there's a occasion. I can remember one conversation where somebody said something to the effect, like, well, we like to do that together because that's part of our boundary. And I think uh, what they're wanting to say, 
perhaps if they were implying, was we like to do that together as part of our agreement. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's a little bit different. We are going to go into that because I think they are really different. Mm -hmm. um, today we're talking about personal boundaries. So a boundary basically is a line that marks the limits of an area. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to personal boundaries, um, these are more like I'd say the imaginary lines we kind of create around ourselves that give us balance or make us feel safe or protect us like our minds, our bodies, um, our safety. Well, that's interesting that you mentioned the mind and the body because uh, I remember not telling you, but somebody was trying to uh, define them and what the differences are. And they were uh, trying to point it out in a physical sense that we might have a boundary as having a physical thing and an agreement as having uh, more of a less physical approach to it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I think there's there's both in both. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. A boundary is not just about physicality. It could be sure. protecting your emotions. Yeah, it could yeah, be absolutely. feelings. Mm -hmm. And the boundary focuses on you. So what what you need, what you're comfortable with, and how you wish to be treated. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally sense. All right. So then agreement then mm -hmm. is different from a boundary. Yeah. Should I do this? One? Yeah. An agreement is a different is different from a boundary. I got that right. <laughs> it's an agreement is an arrangement. Are you having it? You're so cute when you read the definition. <laughs> you didn't know I could read, huh? An agreement is an arrangement or contract in which people agree on what is to be done, or I guess not done. Yes. Uh, things that you and your partner, partners, will do, accept, or allow, or in the negation of that, will not accept, mm -hmm. not allow, and not participate. Yeah, when people talk about agreements, I think the idea is that they're made and agreed by mm -hmm. All people. Participants, right? Yeah, all participants. Yeah. Whereas a boundary is Pers specific to you. You can decide whatever boundaries you want. So, so, that, so that's a good distinction right there, right? So uh, the boundary is often, if not maybe exclusively, a personal decision. You decide where your boundaries are, where they lie. And an agreement is something that you have made, as it says, in agreement with another or others. Yeah. yeah. And we may share similar personal boundaries. And those things are what we will base our agreements on but they're still separate, like our boundaries are personal. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think creating agreements that work is super cr critical for all relationships. And mm -hmm. so, and it's hard too. And I think it's, it's, I think it's an area definitely where people get stuck, which yeah. is why it's such a huge part of our, our polyamory mastery group program. Sure. Yeah, and it's often very difficult in the beginning of a relationship to say, hey, I like you, you like me, let's start, you know, hanging. And then all of a sudden, well, wait a second, before we get to like each other too much, we're going to have to have like a big discussion about agreements and boundaries and, you know, I mean, it doesn't really seem to fly that way very often, right? Very often it's, we kind of go to it and then we might be, oh, by the way, you're stepping on my boundary and I need <laughs> you to like back up a bit. Yeah. And you might not be comfortable with people too, right? It's the more we get comfortable, the more we yeah. are able to communicate things. But also sometimes I think the longer time passes, the long, harder it is sure. also. So Absolutely. it's why it's really important to do it at the beginning of a relationship. Right. And that's why it's part, you know, part of the program. Yeah. So, but you know, also, I think uh, a lot of it depends on where you're coming from, right? So if you are a people pleaser, if you were codependent, if you had some issue of attachment, it might be, less comfortable to make those announcements. Oh, for sure. But as you said, the more we talk about it, the more familiar we become with it, the more comfortable we are announcing our position. But we are always, always, always within our rights to say what we're wanting and not wanting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the thing I like to believe, and I'm starting to believe more now, because I would say probably in the past, I was more of a people pleaser mm -hmm. in many ways. Oh, I wish I would have known you then. <laughs> I do, I do people <laughs> no, pleasing I now. I'm very generous with my time yeah, and energy sure no, and that sure. sort of thing. But I have run into situations in the past where then I get resentful for it. So this is something I'm learning mm -hmm. myself to do. And yeah. um, where was I going to that? I, you know, what I yeah. like to believe in terms of boundaries and needs in particular is that people want to uh, support you in um, having your needs met, sure. like especially, especially a partner. So I would believe, I believe, and I'd like to continue to believe that you expressing your needs to me allows me to be able to help you meet those needs and vice versa. Yeah. And we're actually doing our partners a disservice if we don't share those right. things with them. But you mentioned something that's quite interesting also, and that's mm -hmm. the idea of uh, resentment. And it might be coming a little bit ahead of ourselves here, but the idea that okay. if you do not express your boundaries, then they might get walked on and you might feel resentful towards it. But how would the other person know what your boundaries are if you've not yet communicated? 
oh yes, and this happens, this happens. Like we don't know, right? And we might inadvertently do it. Intentionally, it. unintentionally. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure, we've all done it, yeah, yeah, for, for sure. sure yeah. So um, so really it comes down to, again, is the idea of becoming comfortable enough to announce your boundaries. And if you're not yet comfortable enough to do that, we can certainly help you find out how to do that. So um, we'd like to know from you what happens when we don't, we don't know our boundaries, so we don't spend time thinking about what our boundaries are, or and or we don't share them with others. So you talked about stepping on your boundaries and you know, we, we named the, the today's live specifically, pardon me, but you're stepping on my boundaries um, because people do do that. And like we said, it can be intentional or unintentional. Well, that's the thing, right? So excuse me, you know, you could be at a cocktail party and not know you're stepping on somebody's boundaries, right? You could be hanging out with friends and not know. Mm -hmm. We won't know until we're told. Right? Yeah. So it's gotta be about that communication again. Yeah, so when we don't know our boundaries um, and we don't share them with others, um, it's not clear what we'll accept and what we won't accept. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, then people are sort of left to their own devices to read between the lines, right? right? And we could read between the lines unintentionally. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I think it maybe falls into two major categories. Those people who are wanting to always consider how the other person might receive them or their intentions or whatever mm -hmm. their action, and other people who are rather oblivious to it and who may not necessarily know about it, but those people we have to alert to them and tell them, this is where my boundary begins. Yeah. My mother always had a great uh, expression, a great saying, and she would always say, uh, your rights end where mine begin. Hmm. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. So Wisdom like, from Mama. Yeah. So it's like, Maybe you know, watching. we have, Hello, hey, Mama, watching. how are you? Mm -hmm. um, it's that, you know, we have well-defined parameters, right? And fences uh, might seem objectionable in the beginning, but fences, like other parameters might make us feel safer. So being able to say no to a child sounds, well, I don't want to be the bad parent, and yet it makes the child feel safer. You're laughing at me, am I going off? No, no, I was thinking when you were saying that about fences, I was thinking about the saying, which I'm sure I'm gonna get wrong, is um, good fences make good neighbors. Yeah, for sure. Good neighbors Absolutely. make great fences, I don't know. No, but, but good fences make for good neighbors. Well, yeah, and it's so true because that way, I know where you belong and I know where I belong and there's, it's defined, it's well said. So the same thing is with our boundaries, right? So uh, I will tell you when I'm feeling as though my boundary is being approached on and you can respect that. Yeah. And if you don't, then I'll know who I'm dealing with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's good to have that and know that. This is a good comment. The problem I've had over time is partners have no issues with what they do, even though I have expressed the issues beforehand. Mm. So we're gonna get to that point mm -hmm. because that's an important point. Then important. what do you do when people don't respect right. your boundaries? Right, 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 right. What choices do you have then? Yeah, but I think the other thing, and this is not for this case, but if we don't communicate our boundaries to others, or if we continuously allow things to be brushed aside, like our needs to be brushed aside, we can sometimes teach people um, they can learn that our needs are important. And then they, they might unintentionally um, do this all the time. They're like, well, you always do this thing for me, so of course you're gonna do it, so they don't tend to offer, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like learned behavior in some ways. So sometimes we can be responsible for what happens also by not communicating. Well, I think it's always good to try and look at our part in any situation, right? But it's interesting. Um, I wonder, do we only look at our part when things go less well? Do you ever look at our part and say, wow, like, I was really good. Like I really held up men in the brain. I really, you know, recognized their parameters. I really was able to adjust to it. Do we ever pause enough or rather do we pause enough to uh, make mention of that? Because I know, for example, I would reproach myself, but do we often give ourselves enough credit? Can we take a moment to realize it? Because it's important too, right? We want a positive uh, reinforcement even with ourselves. So if we're hitting those boundaries and you see that there's no function, then acknowledge that. Yeah, it's I like guess. the idea of consent. Like I, not too long ago, we were out with some friends and I think you went to go for a hug and then you stopped yourself and then said, oh, you know, is it okay if I hug you? And they kind of looked at you and we were like, oh, that seems crazy. But it, they also then recognized that that was something to do to ask. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. certain things and we can't, like you said, can't assume that people's boundaries are always the same. No. Especially in this community as well. Like if you're going to clubs or you're interacting sure. with people, you know, one of the things to keep in mind is it's always consent. Yeah. Consent is ongoing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if you played with someone, for example, at an event one time, doesn't mean they're going to the next time. So. Not. No, so always err on the side of caution, right? Always ask for the consent. You can never over ask for consent, I guess, yeah. until the person says, okay, stop asking for consent, but. Yes. <laughs> giving that, 
<laughs> but sometimes legally, it can get out of control. Ask. Legally, I have to ask. So the other thing um, I think you talked about before is that we might regret, resent, or reproach ourselves mm-hmm. or others if they cross our boundary yeah. and we haven't communicated. Yeah, that. yeah. So, uh, you know, quick example. Uh, we want to go for dinner. And I say, hey, Tara, like, you know, haven't seen you in a while. Like, let's, uh, let's grab dinner. I'm like, yeah, that's good. I'd love to go to the Four Seasons. And I'm like, hmm, that's not quite what I was <laughs> thinking. I mean, I'd love to go to the Four Seasons, but right now at this moment, like, I haven't been paid in six months or whatever the case is. Uh, so now what <laughs> do I do? Or it's just not the kind of, you're thinking drinks and, you know, right, not well, a full meat dinner. Sure. So now what do I do? Do I uh, simply, you know, try to please you and say, okay, we'll go. And then I have a resentment mm. or do I uh, somehow find a way to communicate it and say, well, I'd love to go with you and perhaps any time, but right now that's not necessarily what I had in mind. Yeah. Well, well what, what would be, wouldn't it be okay to, to say that? It sounds like it came out of my mouth uh, rather fluidly. It seems like it's very acceptable. Mm. And yet my consideration might be, well, I don't want to appear as though I'm, unwilling or cheap or not into you or who knows what or that you're going to not think that it's invested enough i don't know what the parameters might be that would prevent it but some people might feel that it's not so comfortable to say or have to say no yeah i mean i think for me i would rather know that someone was like no that wasn't what i had in mind Mm -hmm. or you know i was thinking it was this I mean, I would also never suggest to someone we go to the Four Seasons on a date. Like if somebody says, oh, I have this great idea. I think we should go to the, like my treat. I'm going to take you to the Four Seasons, maybe. Mm-hmm. But you and I even had a conversation um, today earlier about someone who wants to take me out for my birthday. And it's someone who I'm a friend with. And I don't see them beyond that. And mm-hmm. being a bit uncomfortable with that idea, even saying yes, mm-hmm. because I don't, I know that they're going to want to take me somewhere. I'm, I'm guessing they want to take me somewhere expensive, and I feel guilty about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's kind of gets so, you. So you can what, were you, me, what were you saying to the invite? I don't How know. I haven't responded. Isn't that terrible? See, Are I'm you, gonna. I'm so gonna, that's interesting. So you haven't yet. You've not yet responded because you're delaying it because you're uncomfortable with how you might. I feel like I have to reiterate the fact Mm -hmm. that what I'm interested in is just being friends. And yes, I'd be happy to go out with you, but I feel like I I don't want to have keep repeating that over and over again, but I probably do Mm -hmm. have to be really clear. Like that would be great. You know, I'm still, this is still my position. I don't know. I'll come up with something, Mm -hmm. but yeah, practice, practicing, right? Yeah. But for me, the most interesting part in all of that really is the idea that uh, how we become informed about our position through little things like that. So Mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable having to say that. So I delay it and I will procrastinate because of that, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to coming to terms and saying, well, you know, it might be awkward in the beginning perhaps, or maybe they'll be okay, but I'm going to go to it rather than trying to avoid it or minimize Mm -hmm. it. It's the same too if you meet someone on a dating website or you go on a first date with Mm -hmm. someone and you Mm -hmm. decide you don't want to continue. It's doing the right thing and telling them that, I'm sorry, I'm not interested, but it's also the best thing you can do. For sure, for sure. And yet, unfortunately, uh, very often the etiquette of the day seems to just disconnect. You ghost them. Yeah, I think that's To the point where so many people have done it, it's become part of our vernacular. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to just ghost them rather than saying, you know, you're wonderful, but I'm just not there and, you know, good luck to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I much prefer that. There's some really great comments in the, in the, in here. I love this. Sharing in a relationship can include conversational outlines to avoid the feeling of attacked or confronted mm-hmm. in any discussion. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, I like that. Like one of the things we teach in our program is this attunement communication process. Mm-hmm. And it's all about that. It's yeah. all about sharing and listening and repeating mm-hmm. and that sort yeah, of yeah. thing. So in those cases, those are sort of conversational outlines where you yeah. listen. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and agreements to it, right? Like we're not going to be stacking. Yes. No stonewalling. Stacking. Stonewalling, yeah. stacking, throwing everything in the pot. Mm-hmm. And then, because it also makes it hard for the listener to really pay attention yeah. when we're saying all these things, but even if you make a compliment sandwich. I wonder though, uh, when all that is being fired at us, all those machines are like just, you know, going at it, uh, what is the communication there? Is it really about that particular subject or is it symbolic of something else? Have this person not been heard and they feel as though they have to stack or they have mm. to do these things? Mm. I don't know. What do people think? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Um, mm-hmm. Someone was saying, I never want the exchange between me and the person to turn unpleasant. So I'm reluctant to share my boundaries, but I find that doing that turns the exchange be- between 
me and the person to something negative and unpleasant. Mm-hmm. Ah, so when you don't share the boundaries, I guess that's saying. I think there's a time and place. It's like timing, right? Of when you share it might be helpful in this circumstance. Yeah, well, for sure, timing is everything, right? I mean, I don't know that I necessarily want to talk about certain boundaries when I'm in bed, or <laughs> yes. uh, maybe I do want to talk about it when we're out for a drink out in public and things are kind of like easy. And mm-hmm. you know, so yeah, timing is definitely a big part to consider, right? You want to know your audience, absolutely. But I also want to again. Be self-aware of when I'm wanting to avoid things. What is it yes. that's going on that makes me like uncomfortable with having to have these kind of conversations? Mm-hmm. Because if I can't have it in a conversation, how is it going to play out in the relationship? What is it mm-hmm. going to materialize like? Yeah. So having a conversation, even if it seems rather difficult at the moment, it's our opportunity to influence and shape and maybe get the things we're wanting out of the relationship or get less of what we're not wanting. Kind of relationship. Yeah. But we say that, but it's, it is actually a hard thing to do. It's, it's, Mm. I mean, I'm sure you work with people all the time. I know I do that, you know, this is, this is where the the rubber hits the road where it's really hard to do that because you have to have very strong beliefs in yourself and what the outcomes were and that you, you know, your needs are important Mm. and like all these things. Right. Yeah. But you know, also, I think, uh, for many people, they've never heard their own voice before. They've Mm. never heard themselves say what they're wanting or not wanting. It's unfortunate. You know, uh, depending on the type of family you might have come from, you were not allowed to express your own feelings. Or if you did and it ran counter to the authorities of those objects, then you might have been seen as uh, being disrespectful, rude or whatever, punished, gone to your, you know, sent to your mm-hmm. room. So you may not have heard yourself advocate for yourself yet. Ah, yes. But we can learn how to do that and we will show you how to do that because we do yes. that. Yeah, so that's part of the learned mm-hmm. um, secure attachment. Yeah. So that's why that's another part of the program. I feel like we're saying a lot of these things, but they're all interconnected, right? Yeah. Because our attachment has a very strong bearing, like you said, mm-hmm. on how we're able to express our needs, express our boundaries, mm-hmm. communicate what we want, be clear and mm-hmm. be feel secure in yeah. doing that. Because it can feel like it's going to go sideways, you know, because you might have had built up to- over time mm-hmm. experiences that have been such that mm-hmm. your needs have not been met. You weren't listened to mm-hmm. all those things. So, yeah, we were and just listening to some stuff on this sure. today. And even if it goes sideways, which on occasion it might, it is survivable. But the more you do it, the more you practice it, the more you make your voice strong and heard, the easier it will become to announce it and you'll feel more Exactly. So um, we've probably talked a bit about this, but why are boundaries important? Mm-hmm. So like we said, it, it you know informs other what's acceptable right. and what's not. Um, and they include being able to say no and meaning it and saying right. yes and meaning it. So I, I love this. Sorry, what were you going to say? No, just you know about the people pleasing again. So there's one way of saying yes, which is just to please them. And there's the other one, it's actual authentic. And you really subscribe to you feel good about it Mm -hmm. totally different i always want people to be a hell yes on things like i would never want somebody to be doing something because they think i want it really yeah Uh, only because i want it uh, if it's something they don't want mm. i mean people can be neutral to things this comes Mm -hmm. up in sex right like you might want some fancy thing and i might be like "Ah, that might not turn me on but i'm neutral to it but i wouldn't want someone to do something that they're not a yes for Mm. is there a no that there are no. Okay. All right. Yeah. So maybe maybe it's not going to be a hell yes, like but as long yes. as it's not a no. Yeah. But they say yes. To exactly. Okay. So I love this part. I'm going to read these all out because I saw this in an article. Mm, They're nice. the self boundaries, the self care we give ourselves. They say I matter, my feelings matter, mm-hmm. my ideas matter, my health matters, my dreams matter, my needs matter. Fantastic. And I I love that. It's like basically saying, I ma- I matter. And it's hard, I think, for people um, to do that because I think we we often are growing up with this notion that paying attention to self and that sort of thing can be selfish and right. or, you know, you might feel guilty for it. I know I have. And so we'd love to hear if anyone else experiences that as well because mm. I think that's pretty common with a lot of people, yeah, depending uh, on how you grew up, right? Well, how we grew up. So a lot of us grew up believing that we were uh, – you know, or we're taught discouraged from being selfish. And yet, were we taught enough to be self-preserving, mm. right? So I don't want to be selfish to the point where I'm taking more than my share, but I want to be self-preserving enough where my boundaries are still intact. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. Right? So I'm within my rights to say that my ideas matter, 
that my health matters, that whatever it is that concerns me, it matters and it's valid. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, we have a diagram. I love this part. So um, how do you start in mm -hmm. identifying your boundaries? Mm -hmm. So I love this diagram. Um, let me sh share it here. Um, in terms of your layers, layers of boundaries. So you've got yourself in the middle. So you can think about it in terms of your outstretched arms, right? People that are at the tips of your fingers are kind of at the acquaintance level and everybody outside mm. of that is sort of strangers. And then you move in closer to your intimate part and you have friends and family, and then you have intimate relationships and then you have yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about what boundaries you might Put. You might have different boundaries for different layers. Mm -hmm. Basically, think of the expression uh, keeping them at arm's length. Right? Uh, you don't yes. really know somebody that well, so you might be keeping them at arm's length until they come into your inner circle, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. But it also made me think of the other expression, oh, yeah. uh, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Exactly. But we don't want enemies in our love relationships, right? We want to, I mean, it's fun to fight and make up a little bit sometimes, perhaps, but no, we're talking about loving relationships where we want to bring people into our inner circle. Yeah, it's interesting at the acquaintance level, if you think about your outstretched arms, mm -hmm. like someone at your acquaintance level, you might shake your hand. But we had an experience this weekend where we met people for the very mm -hmm. first time on a beach and the men were give, giving the women like kisses on the cheeks. Like, well, I've and, never and met kissing men as well. Yeah, kissing men as well. And so it's a culture. It can be a cultural yeah, difference sure. too. So. Right. And in some communities, you never touch each other. Oh, yeah. Right? So yeah, be, be cognizant of uh, the temperature of the room. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you can think about those layers, but you can also ask yourself some questions. And we have like an entire exercise in polyamory mastery. Um, but to give you a few ideas, are there areas of your life or different interactions with different people where you feel, for example, uncomfortable, hurt or anxious, depleted, mm -hmm. sad? Like, I think if you start to, you know, scroll through your relationships with people, it may become a, it may become apparent that some of these things you might feel unsafe or obligated. There's people that push your buttons for sure mm -hmm. and or elicit other unpleasant feelings. So then you have those, you have your layers, and then you can start. Sometimes people start with the idea of no, mm -hmm. which is one option of writing your boundaries out. So, yeah. for example, no disrespect, no negative energy. But when you use the negative, I think that you have to be really clear, like no mm -hmm. disrespect is great. And I often hear people saying, well, if people just respect it, respected me, we'd be fine. But you and I might have different definitions mm -hmm. of what respect is. So that's why that one is a bit of a tricky word, but it could be your space, your time, your energy, your wisdom, your body, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, personally, I see that a lot on uh, dating profiles, people say, I don't want this, I don't want that, like, no, this, no, that. And to me, it's focused on the negative, mm -hmm. which, you know, I'm, I want to hear what your boundaries are, but I prefer if it was framed like, I would like to maintain healthy conversations, or I want to make sure that I'm respecting these ways. So I like to frame it in the positive. The negative, yeah. uh, for me personally, I don't find as attractive, Yeah. but sometimes just necessary. Like, hey, no. That's, you know, I said no, and no is always no. Yeah, sometimes you have to use the word no, but mm -hmm. if you're writing them up for yourself, you might find it easier to write things in the I am statements, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I value this. For right. example, I value my sexual health and I get tested regularly. I ask my partners to do the same and ask them to keep me informed of mm -hmm. their sexual history. Right. So that may be a boundary for you, a personal boundary. Yeah. So, yes. That, that uh, in a way, makes me uh, think about the last uh, comment. So, uh, active question, do you have tips when a partner might always forget one's boundaries? And the question then is, well, are they interested in knowing your boundaries? Or they just want their own, what they want. Mm -hmm. So maybe they don't care about your boundaries. So one way I think is going back to the communication style is I will say something and I'll ask my partner to uh, listen actively, but listen to understand. And one way that they might demonstrate that they've been actively listening is to reiterate what I've said. So one of my boundaries is I don't like when people uh, eat off my plate. So, is that true? <laughs> my ex-husband was like that. Is that true? Oh dear. <laughs> so so what, what, what was my boundary there? When I don't you? like when people eat off my plate. I heard you say. I heard you say you don't like it when people eat off just, your just plate. Just as an example. I love when you eat off my plate. But, Did so, I get that right? Did I get that right? Yes, I, I believe you heard me correctly. You heard what I was saying. Yeah. Is there anything you have to add to that? 
sometimes you can say I that. Appreci- I appreciate your lesson. Thank you. No, but so that's, I think, one thing that you could do is find out uh, if they are actually listening to what you're saying. And then if they are repeating it but not following through the action, then it's opening the question of, well, you know, are you interested in what's important to me? Mm-hmm. Are, you know, is it important to you? What's important to me? Yeah, exactly. You Find can, out. Yeah, and one of the things you could do is do it in a positive way, in mm. this positive communication. Mm. But you can say, I've noticed that, oh, or right. I'm feeling that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, speak from the I or the me. Yeah, speak from it the makes, I or the me. me feel as though you're not. When this happens, mm. I feel right. this. And then you could say, I've noticed that this is a boundary that I expressed to you in the past. Mm-hmm. And I'm, but anyways, you can go at it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, um, and it, it, and sometimes you have to repeat a boundary um, yeah. repeatedly until yeah, yeah, they fully sure. understand. Because it could be in our communication. It could be that they're not wanting to understand. It could be that they don't understand. It could be that they've always done it the other way and you're presenting them with something that they is new to them, whatever. But mm-hmm. the thing is really... What is their intention? So is it simply a question that they've forgotten or that it's uh, an old habit that they have to unlearn? Mm-hmm. Or are they simply wanting to do their own thing and are discounting or minimizing what it is you're trying to express? Mm-hmm. And that'll inform you uh, greatly as to where the relationship is going to go, who you're with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um... Because I, ideally, hopefully, I'm hoping for you that you are with somebody who cares about the things that you care about as well. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If it's important to you. Is it important to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's part of the writing of the boundaries is being clear when you're writing it up on why it's important to mm-hmm. you. And you don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to defend your boundaries. But understanding why it's important to you is a good way of being clear when you're communicating it. Because then, you know, you can clearly share what it is that you have that boundary on. Yeah. So. Make it clear. Yeah, make it clear. Yeah. So what can we do when boundaries are not responded to? So we talked a mm-hmm. bit about that. Um, it's interesting because boundaries are the only thing we really have control over. We can't control someone else's behavior. And the agreements change over time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but people, So people can res- respond as mm-hmm. they wish. Right. I mean, the only thing we can do is take action accordingly. Mm-hmm. I, and, and, you know, this is, again, we're saying this, this, saying this to you quite simply, but it is hard to set and stick to your boundaries. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, they, like I said, they can choose to still do as they wish. And then it's up to us to take that action. Right. So so what are the actions if somebody's not listening to you, if they're not honoring your boundaries? I mean, I guess it depends on how long it's gone on. You obviously can repeat them and share mm-hmm. them again, right. share it in a different way. That would probably um, be the most immediate thing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. if, if people are continuously not respecting your boundaries, mm-hmm. the choice is to detach in some way. You can mm-hmm. emotionally detach, you can physically detach, distance yourself, or you can end the relationship. Right. And I mean, those are some serious things. Mm-hmm. So those are the options. It's just, yeah. again, it's yeah. not so yeah. easy to do that. Right, depending on your level of emotional investment, uh, you might not want to just throw in the towel as your first step. I think very often, start with the conversation, right? Reiterate what it is your boundaries are. You might even explain, but I don't think it's necessary, but you might explain why you've chosen those boundaries, what it, mm-hmm. what makes it important to you, mm-hmm. and then see if they're wanting to participate in that. If they can understand it, they can get it, do they want to? Yeah. And then, yeah, if it's not working, then create some distance and maybe decide whether or not it's viable, whether it's worth the investment. Mm-hmm. I'm sure people have had relationships, friendships in their life where people, you feel like you're, I mean, I've had them where I constantly feel like I'm like stepping on pins and needles and, um, and it's not a great feeling. And, you know, I decided with a particular friend that I had to step back because every time I interacted with them, I felt like no matter what it was I said, they were always looking for the negative in it Uh or trying to find some way of putting me down Mm. or comparing or I don't know what it is. It just felt like this negative energy and I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so from the comments in the group, we know that boundary setting and communicating your boundaries and or needs is not easy for many people and can, and like we said, can be an ongoing and painful process. Mm -hmm. But the same is also true for creating relationship agreements based on what we want mm-hmm. rather than what we don't want. We right. talked a bit about this at the beginning because I think what often happens and you you know you may have experienced your own personal situations 
or um, others you've heard about where they're, you know, they get into a relationship and all of a sudden people are setting up rules and very strict rules right. based on the negative to protect us from jealousy right. or discomfort rather than what you want. Mm -hmm. So things you value. Right. So that kind of speaks to what we we're talking about in terms of how you write your boundaries, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it makes me think about the idea of communicating the boundaries, how uh, if we don't, we might come away with uh, resentments. We might reproach ourselves for not having said something. But when we do speak them, uh, very often, we're amazed that like how easy it was, how much stronger we feel about ourselves, but also the reaction from other people very often is they're quite thankful that we have shared our boundaries with them, mm -hmm. that they're not wanting to uh, do something that's going to be off-putting or offending to us. They might not have been on the radar, but they appreciate it as well. Mm -hmm. And when we communicate our boundaries, it makes it easier for other people to do so as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So this is why in Polyamory Mastery, our group program, we walk you through the step-by-step -step process mm -hmm to uh, create your personalized right. values-based uh, relationship agreements. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the people that I've worked with, the people we've worked with um, have had great success in this, mm -hmm. and they feel like it's a better way of relating with their yeah. partners rather than on these rules that, you know, frankly, I think a lot of people end up breaking the rules because, you know, because they're so, and it focuses the energy on the negative. I think that's, that's the problem. So well, isn't there a rule in monogamy when you get married, thou shalt not have any else <laughs> or something like that? Yes, and people break that one all the time. They have a contract, they have a marital contract. A marital contract. A legally binding marital contract. Yes. I mean, and those don't work, <laughs> as we know. Well, no, well they can. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes yeah. they do. Which is why I think the, the idea of placing it on things we value, creating agreements based on what we value is more important. Yeah. For example, if you if you share a value such as sexual health, like as we do, so it can be a boundary around mm -hmm. sexual health, mm -hmm. but it also can be agreement you have with your partners. Yeah, for sure. So you may have an agreement around um, what you do um, in terms of how regularly you get tested. So mm -hmm. we have an agreement that we regularly get tested and we ask our potential partners about their testing history yeah. and, mm -hmm. and ask people to communicate um, when things change and we do the same. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. yeah. So simple. So far. <laughs> it's not, not that simple. Not going to put it into practice. <laughs> so, I mean, we talked about a lot of things today, um, but the bottom line is, oh, here's a question. What do you do if you communicate about a person looks at you blankly and does not answer back? That is a great yeah. question. Check for a pulse. Check for, well, you can check for understanding. Mm -hmm. You can say, um, you can say, how, how could you say it? You could say, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you understand what it was that I, no, no, what, you, what no, you, no, you, no, you. What else you got? What else you got? What else you got? Well, could you ask an open-ended question? Oh, an open-ended question without using you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it could be you in the passive, but not as the subject. So. Um, you might say, well, you know, what did you think about that? Or, you know, how does it make you feel? Or, you know, do you, does that resonate with you? Do you feel something? Oh, what, what do you think view? about what I just expressed yeah. to you? How does that work for you? Or yeah. how does that, you know, how, do you how does it make you feel? Like? What do you think about it? Yeah. Something to have them uh, answer something back. But if they're, if they're blank like that in the discussion, what might you be like to look at? <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. I wouldn't want to repeat it because that might raise, the, you know, when someone repeats things over and over again, like when I feel like I'm not being heard sometimes, I will repeat things over and over again. But you can ask for understanding. Uh -huh. What would you say? Well, what do you do? I yeah, do you, um, you know, I can say I don't want to repeat myself, but I wanted to check to make sure that you understood what I shared with you. Could you not say that? Sure, I think you could. You just did. Yeah. How would that be received? Hmm. How would that be received? I think a lot of it also depends, again, on the context, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if we're just about to uh, unwind, it might be not the best time as if we're just doing something like, you know, cleaning the house or whatever, and we talk about it. I don't know. Like, I think the settings have a lot to do. Well, time is important, but yeah. if you are in bed and someone's not oh, listening to well, you. Well, no, then it's pertinent. Like you, you could say, say before sure. we begin. Yeah. I just want to make sure that, you, you know, know that, you understand what it was right, that we were, I would just have said to you, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Or so you, you remember, can ask for or you remember my boundary that we talked about this? Like so when we get carried away, don't think that this is gonna happen. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> So there's lots of questions and lots of answers, but these are the perfect things. These are the things we talk about with our people we work with all the time. So, you know, we want people to master their open and polyamorous mm -hmm. relationships and have like the deep connection, pleasure and satisfaction in your relationships. So you don't have those kinds of conversations, or at least those kinds of conversations are easier. And you can deal with feelings of jealousy and self-doubt and get rid of the arguing and contempt. Yeah, yeah. For sure. No, there are going to be difficult conversations. We're not always going to have complete agreement on every subject with everyone. That's exactly, exactly yeah. But exactly. being able to talk about these things as we do in therapy makes it viable. In other words, we say that if you can talk about it in therapy, you can talk about it out there. Exactly. So learn how to do it. Awesome. So before we go, I want to share you all the things. So we talked about a lot of things today. So do. if you would like to chat with us and learn more about polyamory mastery, or you just to chat about, with us about your boundaries mm -hmm. and any mm -hmm. of these questions that you have coming up in your relationship, be happy to jump on a call um, and talk to you about those things. You can go to our website, um, go to aaronandre.com slash book with us. If you want to just jump right in and join us in Polyamory Mastery, we'll get you into action right away. And that's our 16 week program um, where we share with you this step-by-step -step process to mastering your relationship. And finally, as promised, your bonus for staying to the end today, um, or fast forwarding to this point, <laughs> is you can <laughs> drop the word boundaries and we will send you uh, your boundaries cheat sheet, which has some notes um, about things we talked about and some ideas to work on your boundaries. Yeah, yeah good. Woo! That was a good one. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and let us know what you thought. Thank you, and we'll talk soon. Mm -hmm. If you want to explore polyamory, open up a relationship, or try your hand at swinging, we can help. Check out our website at terranandre.com for information on our Poly Newbies digital course or our deeper dive open relationship and polyamory mastery program where you get direct coaching from us. There's also other individual and couples coaching options there as well. Thanks for listening to the Let's Talk Polyamory podcast with TNA. Don't forget to subscribe and give us some love on your favorite podcasting platform. You can check out the show notes for any of the links to the courses or information we talked about today. Thanks and have a fantastic and sexy day.